Lise Wilcox, welcome to my living room. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to be there from my living room. <laughs> and where is your living room located? In Coburg, Ontario, Canada. I'm just about an hour and 10 minutes east of Toronto. Yeah, I have a lot of family in, in the Toronto area. So. Right yeah, yeah, it's beautiful up there. How yeah. is everything doing with the whole COVID-19 pandemic? I'm in this little tiny beachfront town and our motto is, I'm not joking, the, the motto is Ontario's feel good town. And it's like, yep, check. Like everything is very low key. We, they had to close our beach for the summer, which is a big change. Oh. Um, other than that, everything is pretty low key. They made you close your beach. I mean, here, even in New Jersey, New York, which was the hotbed, the beaches are yeah. still open. Wild, hey? I think they're worried about, because we haven't had very many cases, I think they're worried about people coming in from all kinds of other hotbeds and like <laughs> leaving it, <laughs> leaving it on the beach. So they just made a decision to shut it down. So a big change, but you know, what else is new? <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> In 2020, it's the, it's the gift that keeps on giving, right? I know, I know, I know. We're in the home stretch though, right? We're I, like, I hope. Halfway through. Right. You know, because California, they were open, now they closed again. I pray that that doesn't happen here. I mean, we're already still, you know, not even fully open here yet in New Jersey. Yeah. But I hope that we don't, you know, take a few steps back yeah. to where everything is closed, you know, because... Yeah. The businesses can't survive, but people also have to do their part and wear their masks. And, and that's been a little touch yeah. and go. It's I feel like it's just being calibrated constantly, right? To get a good mix of both that protects everybody emotionally, mentally, financially, physically, all the, all the ways. Yeah, yeah. So I know that you have an amazing story. I mean, for starters, you're the definition of a warrior princess. You're a Thank breast you. cancer survivor, a single mother of three. Yeah. In this pandemic, I can't imagine doing parenthood alone. <laughs> How old are your kids? Uh, they'll be 10 and eight and eight. So I have twins and I have one who's uh, just a couple of years older. It's like a sweet spot of parenting mm -hmm. right now. So you had to do homeschooling for all three? Yes, but I was, I, I have a background in education, specifically Montessori education. And so like all my kids, they're, they're bright, they're engaged learners. So I was less focused on what they were doing on a screen and more focused about them being outside in the yard, creating, building stuff. So homeschooling wasn't, it didn't feel like as big a deal because I feel like it's such an immersive learning environment here that I was pretty relaxed about the actual schoolwork they did. Yeah. Well, you have that nurturing, not only in your home yeah. life, but obviously in your professional life, which is what brought us together today. <laughs> yeah. You have a top rated podcast to help women love themselves and empower themselves. So talk to me about that. It's called To Call Myself Beloved. Um, I have a book coming out under the same name and everything, everything I do is all, it's all the same. Like spoiler, it's all, it's all rooted in self-love. And I feel like what I do, like what my purpose and gift and strength is, is to, is that nurturing quality. It's to give people the permission they often need to just be themselves and to let go of the fear of judgment and let go of other people's expectations and let go of that fear of rejection and shame that comes from that and really simply just show up as who they are, accept who they are and truly love who they are and then watch as their outer world starts to mimic their inner environment and just starts to flow and feel really good and joyful. Yeah. How did you get to that place? A lot of adversity. A lot of adversity. I, um, I use, like, I guess you could call it a system. Um, I use this concept of emotional alchemy that I constantly in my life, no matter if it's childhood drama, a, an uncomfortable to say the least divorce, breast cancer, losing my breast, like all the things. Um, I really am focused on not finding the silver lining, but finding a way of making something purposeful. So taking something that's been really uncomfortable or dark and heavy and consciously looking at it in a new way, changing my perspective, my mindset, and really making it my own. And in doing so, making it beautiful and purposeful and give it meaning for me. And in every opportunity I've had to do that through, as I say, like lots of adversity, that's been the bottom line, that you always have a choice how you respond and react to something. And when you're mindful about how you're responding and reacting, 
you might not have control over what's happening, but you sure have control over how you're reacting to what's happening. And that is ridiculously empowering for each of us. So how do you help someone that, you know, is maybe in their mid thirties, forties, they've been in their, that in their same patterns, their whole lives, right? Maybe they're not asserted enough. Maybe they let yeah. people walk all over them or whatever the case may be. How do you work with them to rewire their brains to kind of flip the script. That's exactly what we do is it's, it basically is a rewiring. Oh. There's a lot of unlearning and a lot of um, replacing that old behavior with new behavior. And the crazy thing is that when we're talking about a behavior change, it's so difficult because we're not actually changing the behavior. You know, our behaviors are attached to our thoughts and what we think, what we think. And our thoughts are attached to our subconscious beliefs, the stuff that we don't even really have access to. So when we're changing a behavior, we're actually changing a belief system. And if you only focus on changing the behavior, you're missing like the origin story and the root of that emotional wound. So what I do with people is I ask a bunch of questions and sometimes it gets, it feels like so not nitpicky, but it's like, it seems so like, why is she asking me this? Like, what does this have to do with anything? Because it's the root stuff that we have been trained to avoid, that uncomfortable stuff, that narrative, that the, the way we've just do it, been doing it, like in a sleepwalking style through our lives, right? That's the stuff I want to get to. Because when I find out what your why is or what the origin story, what that core wound is like, that's when we can heal it. And when we heal it at the source or at the core, our thoughts start to change. Like we see our world differently. And when we see our world differently, we can actually choose new patterns of behavior. So we're talking about like long lasting change just by scratching the surface, having the courage to feel your actual feelings, put some name to them, remove the shame from them and heal yourself forward. Wow. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, make it sound so easy. I know it's a lot of hard work, though, that goes into it. And the person has to be dedicated, yeah. right? Yeah. And the person has to be ready. Like, I don't do a ton of marketing my coaching services because people tend to find me when the timing is right. I've got online courses. So sometimes people find me, pardon me, through the podcast or through doing an online course. And then they're kind of ready for more. But people have to be ready to work with me. And I'm very very transparent about that because it's like we hang on to our pain and we hang on to our past so much that you have to feel safe and comfortable and trusting enough that you can even be open to the idea of letting it go and trusting me to guide you through that process and when people are ready for that it's kind of a cakewalk because I facilitate that process in a motherly safe nurturing way. I love that so the book is kind of your teaching and coaching wrapped in one a hundred percent. Yeah. It's like, I think we say on the back of the book, it's equal parts memoir, self-help book and cozy up on the couch and talk to a really good friend. It's, it feels like all of that. It's, you know, very much informed by the really cataclysmic events of my life. Um, but it's so much more like it opens with a personal essay on each of those things and then gives incredibly practical, hands-on, easy to implement tools and questions that anybody can start um, applying to their own life. So to call myself beloved, yes. it comes out August 11th. It sure does. <laughs> you are so excited. I, 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 this has been in the works for a while and I'm sure when it was, you weren't imagining launching the book during a pandemic, but yeah. I think it's a perfect time to launch something like this. Number one, everyone's very low key, yeah. you know, these, these months, these yeah. next upcoming months. And number two, being in lockdown, I think, gave people a lot of time to reflect on themselves, what they really want, what they don't want, and what they want to change. So enter your book to give people these tools, exactly. which I think is really exciting. Exactly. And, you know, I wrote the proposal for the book while I was doing chemotherapy. So oh, wow. to me, it's very fitting. Like, why wouldn't we launch it during a pandemic? This is emotional alchemy, right? Like taking something that was unwanted in your life and finding a way of making it so beautiful and so purposeful. So I kind of think it's like right on brand. And right on <laughs> you said adversity got you here. I want it now. So. Yeah. Uh, thank you so, so much. This was so great. You, you're, you're, you, you radiate through the screen. So I, I can't wait to get a copy of the book. Where can people find out more about you and to order? 
they can go to my website, leesewilcox.com, L-E-I-S-S-E-W-I-L-C-O-X. Um, and the official Amazon launch is uh, August 11th. So we'll be directing all traffic there on the 11th. I'm having a virtual launch party people can join. Just go to my website. Great, great. Lees, thank you so, so much. I look forward to picking up the book and talking to you soon. My pleasure. Thank you. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Bye.